Welcome to the Walt Whitman Show. Welcome to Cork in Ireland. Hello, Ned Baxter, and you're the first person here, and it's lovely to to welcome you. I'm Paul Omani, and I'm going to do a little celebration to to the great great poet Walt Whitman. Zaki, my Zaki, my friend from Switzerland, is here. And I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. It's lovely. But whoever is here is more than welcome. Just to tell you that uh, Walt Whitman is an American poet. And he was born on the 31st of May, 1819. So this time, 200 years ago, his mother wasn't yet in labor. Yeah, Walt hadn't yet been born. And this is what Walt Whitman looked like in the year that he died. So I'm particularly keen on the poetry of Walt Whitman. I think he, he's an, been an extraordinary influence on my life. Mary Bond, welcome, welcome. How good to see you. How very good to see you. So, yeah, why? Uh, buona sera. Buona sera. Yes. It's, uh, it's an interesting question. Why bother to celebrate Walt Whitman? What on earth does Walt... How is Walt Whitman even relevant to us today? When lilacs bloom in the doorway... It's just happened once again, as every day. I'm very well. My bond, I'm really very well. I'm going to do a scope now about Walt Whitman, chatting to people about Walt Whitman, welcoming people who are interested in Walt Whitman's anniversary. There have been huge celebrations or acknowledgements of Walt Whitman's birthday in various parts of the United States already. I saw the University of California in Los Angeles, the campus there, some people on the campus there produced a wonderful looking kind of newspaper really all about Walt Whitman. This is him and I, I'm on a bit of a journey which is to read the whole of this live into uh, on periscope two people and uh, this journey began about three years ago ideally it would have been finished uh, by the time of his 200th uh, birthday but what i thought i'd do yeah getting ready for the birthday party yeah i thought i'd read a couple of uh, a couple of poems chosen at kind of random. What a bearded, ferocious appearance. Is, uh, now, there must be different cultural symbols and looks which indicate whether somebody is ferocious or not. And somebody who might look like, you know, a vuncular, harmless, old man with a beard nice and pleasant might indeed look ferocious to somebody in a in a Swiss valley I don't know um, in one sense he was a ferocious poet he was ferociously different from all the poets before him and every poet after him has been influenced by him let me let me uh, open a page of Walt Whitman at random. I think it would take me too long. I'd have to be more prepared to think about what are my favorite pieces of Walt Whitman. But I've opened page 100, and in a minute I'm going to open page 200. But let's just start with page 100. 
ferociously unrestrained in his sincerity. Wow, that is a super way of putting it. Ferociously unrestrained in his sincerity. I feel like stopping, stopping the, the, stopping the periscope, stopping the scope, and saying, look. We've got everything we could possibly want about Walt Whitman in that sentence. It's just brilliant. Love it. Love it. No, I won't. I won't stop. But I'm going to read you Pepin Page 100, which is uh, well into the uh, poem called Song of Myself. I do not exp Let's start again. Emily Dickinson of a great poet. I don't want to get distracted onto the Emily Dickinson. This is Walt Whitman, right? <laughs> Although we end up, people used to say to me, what about James Joyce, uh, not James Joyce, what about um, Yeats, great Irish poet? What about the man who wrote The Raven, Edgar Allan Poe? What about Frost? What about everybody under the sun, you know? Well, what about them? They're all fabulous, really. But for me, the greatest of all of the American poets is Walt Whitman. I do not despise you, priests, all time, the world over. My faith is the greatest of faiths and the least of faiths. Enclosing worship ancient and modern and all between ancient and modern. Believing I shall come again upon the earth after 5,000 years. Waiting responses from oracles, honouring the gods, saluting the sun. Making a fetish of the first rock or stump. Powwowing with sticks in the circle of Obis. Helping the Lama or Brahmin as he trims the lamps of the idols, dancing yet through the streets in a phallic procession, wrapped and austere in the woods, a gymnophist, <laughs> a gymnosophist, drinking mead from the skull cap, from the skull cup to Shastas and Vedas, admirant, minding the Koran, Walking the Teocalis, spotting with gore from the stone and knife, beating the serpent skin drum, accepting the Gospels, accepting him that was crucified, knowing assuredly that he is divine. To the mass kneeling, or the Puritan's prayer rising, or sitting patiently in a pew, ranting and frothing in my insane crisis, are waiting dead like till my spirit arouses me, looking forth on pavement and land, or outside of pavement and land, belonging to the winders of the circuit of circuits, belonging to the winders of the circuit of circuits. Indeed. Let us accept and celebrate. I mean, that was Whitman's approach. He was like a big embracer of what is. He embraced all faiths and no faiths. He embraced gods and ungodly creatures. Yeah, he really was an embracer. I do not despise you priests. You know, he does say some fierce things about priests and uh, says fierce things about leaders. And, and he really does lay down a language and a way of speaking and a certain kind of humanitarianism which has stood the test of time. Which I believe, now I'm just, I have only one vote on this. I believe will be relevant as long as humanity survives. I don't know whether it'd be right to call him a humanist or a humanityist, but Walt Whitman was certainly somebody who 
you know, found a way of celebrating the world in all its forms, the peoples in all its forms, by doing something that nobody had ever thought of doing before. He wrote something called Song of Myself, Song of Myself, and he, you know, treated himself in the way that he would treat the whole of humankind. Now, I'm going to read you from page 200 because, no, I think page 198. 200, we're on the 200th anniversary of Walt Whitman's birth. And I'm going to read you, we're two days away from that. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're talking about 200 years. I'm going to read you the 200, page 200. It avails not time nor place. Distance avails not. I am with you, you men and women of a generation, or ever so many generations hence, just as you feel when you look on the river and sky, so I felt, just as any of you is one of a living crowd. I was one of a crowd, just as you are refreshed by the gladness of the river, and the bright flow, I was refreshed. Just as you stand and lean on the rail, yet hurry with the swift current, I stood yet, was hurried, just as you look on the numberless masts of ships and the thick-stemmed pipes of steamboats, I looked. So that's the beginning of the third part of crossing Brooklyn Ferry. Oh, Girl Rush fan, thank you. Thank you. You enjoy the Walt Whitman readings. Thank you very much. Coming up to the, the 200th anniversary of his birth, it's the least I could do is come back and do some more. Bjorn from the Netherlands, welcome. Welcome. Every time I introduce Bjorn or meet Bjorn, I remind him and anybody else who can remember of a, a wonderful communal activity which Bjorn organized one Christmas, maybe maybe four Christmases ago, perhaps three, but certainly maybe three Christmases ago, I'll say, on Periscope. It brought a whole lot of people together from all over the world, which is actually what Periscope does best, isn't it? It avails not time nor place. Distance avails not. There's something you know about Einstein's theory of general relativity that is comes into my mind when I read. It avails not time nor place. Distance avails not. I mean, I'm no scientist. I don't understand you know, particle physics and all of that sort of stuff. But time and place and distance, that is all covered by Einstein, because I heard some expert talking about it the other day. I am with you. I mean, that's that uh, sentence like that, I am with you. I mean, poets didn't write that before Whitman, and not that many people after Whitman wrote things that directly. I am with you. You men and women of a generation. Fair enough, you men and women. It's a bit like, you know, I'm one of the same community as you, you know, living, and he wrote this, uh, this uh, Crossing Brooklyn Ferry probably about, probably about 1850. Not 1850, sorry, 1858 or 9. Or ever so many generations hence, would Walt Whitman celebrate Periscope in a poem? He would list Periscope in the way that he listed the mountains and the rivers and the valleys and the stars and the ships 
he would definitely mention Periscope and Twitter and Facebook. I embrace you all. YouTube even. Emails and podcasting and you know, Whitman would be, I'm sure, not just describing the mountains and the oak trees and the finches and the larks and the thrushes and the, but he would be, he would be with the refugees. He would be with refugees. He would be with people in long lines. The way he was with people during the American Civil War, he really was. You did a beautiful Walt Whitman poem on the Perry Christmas. I do not remember. Bjorn, I, I must, uh, now that you've mentioned, was it a, I picked a poem of Walt Whitman's that you thought was beautiful? It wasn't the poem I've written about Walt Whitman. I wrote a poem about Walt Whitman once. Well, I wrote, I wrote a poem about Walt Whitman's birthday one year. I forget when. Just as you feel when you look on the river and sky. Just as you feel when you look on the river and sky. I mean, Whitman is in this uh, piece of particle of poetry here. He's really saying, look, we're all, we are of the same flesh and mind and instincts. You know, I look at the sky and I look at the rivers and... Uh, you know, I, I feel the same way as you felt. Just as any of you is one of a living crowd. One of a living crowd. I look it up for you. You still have the broadcast videos. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah, I think all of my uh, scopes that I ever did are still available on Periscope. I think. I tried to copy a good few of them at one stage onto YouTube. I think I might uh, need to remember how you can do that. Just as you are refreshed by the gladness of the river. The, refreshed by the gladness of the river. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, who thinks of a river as having the qualities of being glad. Lots are deleted. Lots, are you saying that lots of the um, scopes that were made were never saved? Welcome Lisa. Please welcome Globe Toppers. They were never saved. So much of our culture is not being saved. When people wrote letters, all the letters were saved, if you like, all except those that were burned, deliberately destroyed. Oh, oh, my family is home. I have to leave you. So I leave you with the man himself, his birthday in two days, 31st of May, born 1819. Thank you very much for your company. More tomorrow. More tomorrow. Bye-bye.